presented by Seat77.com. As always, Dave Dubai is coming to you live from the Super Plus Seat 77 broadcast studio in the heart of Silicon Valley. Now, Dave Dubai. North America, thanks for tuning in to the Dave Dubai Show. And now for a quick rundown of the world of sports. Coming up on today's Dave DeBaugh Big Show, I've got the incredible Tommy Brady. I've got coverage of Colin Kaepernick being named the starting quarterback for a Canadian Football League team. Way to go, Chip. And I'll give you my highly anticipated thoughts on the most recent presidential debate. But today, we begin with the Chicago Cubs the team that everyone is secretly pulling for to losing Game 7 of the World Series. The fact is, the Cubs have played their way back into the NLCS again. And this time, they came from behind in the ninth and beat the San Francisco Giants. A stunned, absolutely stunned, AT&T Park cleared out faster than people who showed up to see a Millie Vanilli reunion concert, but realized that they are still lip syncing. The Giants, who have built one of the best baseball organizations, actually have nothing to be ashamed of. They simply got beat by the best team in baseball. Look, when your closer throws at 102 miles an hour, 102 miles an hour on a regular basis, it's going to be hard to beat that team. Next up for the Cubs will be the Nats or the Dodgers. I'm pulling for the Dodgers simply because I hope Vin Scully changes his mind and decides to call a few playoff games. As for the Cubs, let's face it, it has been 108 years, 108 years since they won the World Series. And yes, you are all pulling for them, but are you really? Look, I bet a lot of you have a tiny little piece inside of you that actually wants them to lose. Not because you don't think the Cubs are adorable, but simply because this streak is so long that you hate to see it actually go away. Look, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I would rather see the Cleveland Indians end their 67-year streak and preserve this great American streak that the Chicago Cubs have. I would love to see them build on this 108-year record of not winning the World Series. Okay, so quickly moving on to debate gate two. This time Donald means what he isn't saying. Seriously, this debate made me so embarrassed to be an American. And that's saying a lot because America gave the world Long John Silver restaurants and made that little old lady in those damn clapper commercials more popular than Air Jordan for an entire summer. Look, regardless of the side of the aisle you fall on, left, right, hot, cold, dry, wet, believe that bumpers at bowling alleys should be outlawed, or think it's okay for little Timmy to have a false sense of satisfaction for knocking down all those pins. Damn it, little Timmy, bumpers on a bowling lane is cheating. Or whether or not you're liberal or conservative, the fact is, One of the candidates is calling the other candidate the devil. One of the candidates is threatening to throw the other candidate in jail. One of the candidates wants to ban certain races from entering our country. Oh, and one of the candidates thinks it's okay to use the term locker room when describing all of the things he's done to women. Look, the list is so long that I could have started at the start of the 24 Hours of Le Mans and ended as the last car was finishing. How can anyone who believes in America even consider voting for someone who has said and done all of those things? Now look, I am not delusional. I get that a lot of you don't like Hillary. I get it. And the logo, quite frankly, that she's using for her campaign looks like a hospital direction sign. And sure, she is by no means politically perfect, but Hillary is not a blowhard who's going to start sending out tweets in the middle of the night, getting us into a nuclear war over a wall that won't work because nearly 50% of all illegal people actually enter this country through our airports. Look, 
come November 8th, I know a lot of you are still going to vote on your party lines. But if ever there was a time to stand up to a person that does not deserve to rise to power, this is it. Don't let history repeat itself. Do the right thing. Vote against Trump. And don't allow Billy Bush into the White House in November. Okay, coming up on the Dave DeBall Big Show, I continue my love affair with Tom Brady and I explain how the San Francisco 49ers have actually turned into a bad Canadian Football League team. All of that and more coming up on the Dave DeBall Big Show. And now, North America, it's time to get down and dirty for some hard-hitting, concussion-causing coverage of the National Football League. The sport that Dave is so passionate about that he hasn't missed a single play of a Minnesota Viking game for the past 16 years. Presented by Seat77.com. And now, back to the Dave DeBob Big Show. Okay, it is time to talk about your National Football League. Last week, I went 9 for 14. Going to take a quick victory lap. As I did predict, the Philadelphia Eagles, after their bye week, would have a bye week hangover and would lose to the Detroit Lions. So many of you people out there ripped me for making that prediction. I'm taking my victory lap right now. I was right about that, wrong about the Broncos. Hard to believe that my Minnesota Vikings are the last undefeated team in the National Football League. All right, um, I am, and I think like a lot of Americans, realizing that we are watching one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the National Football League. I'm not going to get into a debate over Ben Roethlisberger being better than Tom Brady because it's just not true. I'm not going to get into a debate about Joe Montana being better than Tom Brady Um, You can win arguments on either sides of those fences. But in this era that we currently live in, Tom Brady is light years ahead of Peyton Manning. He, He just is. Listen, after four weeks in National Football League exile, which he spent in Italy and went to a Michigan football game and just relaxed with his wife, Giselle, who has recently retired, went 28 for 40. 406 yards, no picks, no picks, and three touchdown passes. I mean, this guy, the guy's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, look, Tommy is 39 years old. And the question of how much longer are we going to be able to watch him put up these types of performances? I mean, will he be like 44 still putting up these kinds of numbers in the National Football League? And the answer is probably not. So I think like as Jordan was winding down his last couple years in Chicago, every chance you have to watch Tom Brady at this level play for the New England Patriots, you should take it because it is amazing to watch. All right, moving on to Colin Kaepernick being named the starting quarterback for a super bad really, really bad Canadian Football League team, which calls itself the San Francisco 49ers. Now, look, this organization is an absolute mess from the top all the way down to the bottom. Trent Baalke, who loves drafting players who have MCL, ACL, and other L's injuries coming in, who aren't going to be able to play for years if they're ever going to be able to play at all. Just absolutely terrible draft picks by this organization that decided to run, decided to run Jim Harbaugh out of town. Why? Why would you ever do that? Oh, and then you're going to replace him with Jim Tom Sula. And then you're going to do a press conference in which you talk about how great the organization is. Look, Jed York is in way over his head running the day-to-day football operations of this team. They have quickly fallen into the basement of the National Football League, and it's going to be hard 
very hard for them to get out of it. Now, look, Colin Kaepernick should have been named the starter by Chip Kelly three weeks ago. The season is lost. The season is lost. Chip is already trying to find ways to save his job. Kaepernick, who has not yet signed a restructured contract, which the 49ers want him to sign. The restructured contract basically says, if you get injured, we don't have to pay you next year. Look, I hope Colin doesn't sign it. There's no reason for Colin to sign a restructured contract with the 49ers at this point. All right, North America, tell us what you think. Uh, info at seats77.com. We want to hear from you. We are available on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, the Sound of Cloud, uh, Spreaker, of course, our big iTunes channel. And we're super excited um, about iHeartRadio being picked up there. All right, for the big ego piece, for the Dave DeBaugh Big Show, I am Dave DeBaugh reminding you that not everyone can be a champion Ron Rivera, but everyone, and I do mean everyone, can act like one Cam, and good luck, North America.